Another important point and feature is compaction. If we don't move the soil, if we don't till the soil, we should also not compact the soil. And that is a challenge, especially for mechanized agriculture and heavy tractors and machinery. Now, one elegant way around this is to separate the traffic zone from the crop zone and to traffic only in specific lanes, which will always carry the traffic and keep the crop zone outside these lanes. This method is called controlled traffic farming with permanent tram lines. So the tractors drive always on the same tracks, which will be very compacted like, like roads in the field. And in between, there will be the crop growing area, which never receives any compaction and responds with actually higher yield. And you can do these systems satellite guided uh, with, with modern technology and big machinery, but you can also apply them to small tractors, even to animal traction, if you use, for example, permanent bed and furrow systems, where the beds for the crop always remain in the same place, and the furrows will be the traffic lane. So there are ways to avoid compaction, and compaction is therefore not a reason to revert to tillage and to go out of conservation agriculture. Another important operation, which is also having different uh, aspects than in conventional farming, is the harvest. The harvest in conservation agriculture is actually at the same time the land preparation for the next crop. So management of the residues is actually the preparation of the seedbed for the subsequent crop. Having said that, we see a preference in conservation agriculture to go from a two-step harvest, for example, where the crop is cut with a cutter bar and then brought to a threshing place outside the field, to a one-step harvest, for example, with a combined harvester, which allows us to leave the residues directly in the field and to, to manage the residues in the way we want it for the subsequent crop, as I said, either flat on the ground or with a high stubble, or even with a stripper uh, harvester, which only takes the grain off and leaves the store standing completely. So these options can be easier handled with a one-step harvest. And wherever possible, we would prefer in conservation agriculture to go to such a one-step harvest to leave the residues as completely as possible in the field. Obviously, one specific aspect are root crops. People think root crops are not compatible with conservation agriculture. And in fact, this is not true, because most root crops you can, even at the harvest, remove from the field with not much soil disturbance by just pulling them out of the, uh, of the soil. And this pulling out is actually much easier in conservation agriculture because the soil is not sticking to the roots as much as in conventional agriculture because it's better aggregated. And this can be done by hand, but also mechanized harvesters, like for example for sugar beet, would pull the root out of the crop and not dig it out. There are obviously some crops where digger harvesters have become very popular, but for, for most crops, like for example for peanuts, you would also find technologies available which pull the crop out of the soil instead of digging it out of the soil with a major soil uh, disturbance. One specific crop where you would not be able to pull it out of the crop is a potato. But for that crop, you can actually grow the potato on top of the soil in the mulch cover with straw, as you see on the pictures on the right side. And this works perfectly well, creates same or higher yield, and you just for harvest take the, pick the potatoes out of the straw mulch and you don't have to dig the soil. So there are options for all kinds of crops and technologies are actually available if you only look for them and if you keep in mind the three principles of conservation agriculture for each operation in the cropping cycle. And there are even options for intercropping and mechanized systems not very popular yet, but technically they are possible, and you see on these pictures tractor-based equipment, which allows us to seed the subsequent crop into a standing crop before harvest, so that we can actually already germinate and start growing the next crop before the first crop leaves the field. In this way, cutting the 
the uh, distance, uh, the cropping cycles short and allowing more crops per year on the same field. So there is still option for development of new technologies uh, for conservation agriculture and conservation agriculture in this way opens up more options actually than conventional agriculture which would between crops always disturb the soil and kill everything that grows. It obviously helps if you want to do conservation agriculture that you get specific and good quality equipment. And it would help if this equipment would be available at the specific place in the country uh, and ideally being produced specifically for the requests of the farmers in that country. But even in the absence of equipment, especially small farmers can do a lot in building their own equipment. And we have put on our website a little booklet from Paraguay showing what farmers, small farmers in Paraguay did inventing their own tools for conservation agriculture just from scrap or from material they had around. So ingenuity of farmers is usually the best driver for such technology development. Now coming to my conclusions, conservation agriculture as we know it is actually a cropping system that can increase climate resilience that can improve food security and mitigate climate change. So in this way, it is actually a climate smart agriculture. But this climate smart agriculture would need specific mechanization. Mechanization tools and equipment are a major bottleneck in upscaling conservation agriculture and therefore conservation agriculture adoption can be facilitated if the appropriate technologies are available and are developed according to the needs of the farmers. Suitable mechanization solutions exist right now for such cropping systems. For most cases, as you have seen, quite in a variety. Unfortunately, not yet in each and every country and not yet for each and every farmer, but somewhere of the world you can find today the right equipment for your needs for any needs and uh, it is part of our role also to facilitate this knowledge and to spread it and to make sure that the equipment eventually finds the farmer who wants to do conservation agriculture. Because conservation agriculture in my mind is the agriculture of the future and uh, you could even think it is the future of agriculture because I can't really foresee a future of agriculture without going for conservation agriculture. And with this, I would close and would invite you to join the community of practice on conservation agriculture if you have not yet signed up and you find the indication on our CA website of FAO. Thank you very much.